an anonymous executive producer for sponsoring this reaction. Anonymous or not, appreciated nonetheless. Thank you again for sponsoring this reaction. Welcome back to another EP sponsored reaction for the month of December. This one is The Expanse, season six, episode number one. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. Tell a friend, tell a friend. It all helps the algorithm. All right, just a couple Thank comments you. from the season five finale, starting with executive producer Christina, who says, this season was everything. A lot of people really complained as they expected it to look like the Independence Day blockbuster and found themselves underwhelmed. <laughs> However, those, in my opinion, were fans that heard rumors and dipped in spoiler tags about the scale of book five and set expectations without actually reading the book. It was much more character driven. Those fans will likely be happier with, uh, with six as the books collaborate. I've heard almost no book readers dissatisfied. The author has already denounced the fanboys that that not uh, that not truly care about Amos. Naomi's stuff was too boring for them. I wanted you to see at the end of the credits, you see a closer peek at what they are trying to operate in. Look, now I can't remember how anything is said. Laconia, Lasonia, uh, the Laconians, because that's what. Uh, this split Martian fastest regime now is control only that that gate and have given Marco control of the Medina station which correctly boo you called is a gateway to all the other worlds it's a key piece on the chessboard chessboard considering billions of people are now stuck on a dying planet those worlds seem more necessity than exploration with hopeful intent Marco has a kryptonite and we watched all season what it is Naomi is in her own right a hero and icon of the belt and despite his support of the factions they don't speak for all belters Marco's move just made Chris, uh, Christian's kumbaya kumbaya much harder to sell mm -hmm. did you hear one of her ministers ministers yell we should have trusted we shouldn't have trusted them not to mention palace station was a thing in naomi's home she was giving looks in that room cautiously optimistic but not naive y'all's reaction had me dying especially when rj got just incoherent with what the fuck was happening yeah. he was throwing out events waiting for one to stick that computed <laughs> belief is emotionally dead inside and marco says good boy that child never stood a chance at happiness it's so sad he's 15 a mass murderer emotionally abused and partly responsible for her mother jumping out an airlock to uncertain death yeah, yeah he's meat sleeping great he's Meet sleeping great ever. Marco really think uh, he made this happen, you giving the biggest weapon for second place. Never mind that you use said weapon to genocide your own people or that at any point said weapon can be used on you. This season was ex exquisite. I cannot wait for the next. Yeah. Great recap. Yeah, it really was. All right, executive producer Lissa said, you guys have been <laughs> sensational this season, and I loved your reactions throughout this amazing season. This season was fire. Everyone's acting was outstanding, especially Naomi. All the storylines have been much more engaging, and they gave us a proper villain, and I loved every minute of it. I also love the new crew we have now, and I'm looking forward to all the brilliant adventures that next season will bring us. It looks like Markle single-handedly ended the human race by handing over the pro protomolecule to the to Mars because their stupidity led them to activating the civilization that destroyed the ring gates the first time around. Mm -hmm. I can already see everyone joining and fighting as one just to survive next season, including Marco, and I cannot wait. Mm. Alright, then a couple of comments from YouTube. I try to pick random ones because um, there's quite a few, but here are a couple from the season 5 finale on YouTube. Uh, Techno Pirate uh, notes at 1025, the guys on the YouTube channel Space Dock have a short or shot by shot breakdown of this fire fight that is awesome. Yeah. A lot went down in this fight that is badass, but also follows the known laws of physics. As a tech guy in real life, I love this show, keeping it as grounded on the science as they can. Uh, Tom Bagwell says, great reaction and thoughts. Just a couple of things to add. It wasn't all the Martian military that went through the Laconia Gate. Just one faction, even if it was well-equipped faction. So in our solar system, it's still Earth and Mars, probably uniting against Marco's faction since he attacked both of them. There's yet, that's yet to be resolved, and whoever wins will control the ring and all of the other gates except Laconia. Marco doesn't have the protomolecule any longer. That went to the Martian faction that went to Laconia in exchange for their help with the warships guarding the ring. Cortazar... Uh, was describing the effects that taking the protomolecule to Laconia were having, how it was waking up the protomolecule mechanisms there as they did on Illus. The Martian ship didn't come out the other side of the ring at Laconia, as Holden said early in the season about the entities he sends wherever he passed through a ring. Every time I see them, they seem angrier. 
Um, Peter, Smith, Peter Smith says, if you're confused about the ring system, consider this analogy. Imagine the solar system as the bathroom of your house. It only has one door, which is the ring. This door leads to the hallway, the slow zone everyone was stuck in at the back end of season three. Marco and the Martians broke through the bathroom and fortified the hallway. Because of this, everyone now living on Earth and Mars are stuck in the bathroom. The deal between Marco and the Martians was, was that the Martians would give Marco's ships and free reign of the hallway in exchange for the protomolecule and control of one of the bedrooms, Laconia. As for the scene involving the Barketh, well, the hallway is infested with termites. Every time you open a door in the hallway, there's a risk of shit going sideways. Mm. Great analogy. That does help. That's a nice little breakdown. Yeah, right? that does help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elvis comes through to say, it seems that Marco, who hates unity, united everyone who doesn't like Earth, 90% of the solar system, and this is it. Marco did it. And after this, with or without Marco, the belt will be the boss for a few decades or centuries, and Earth is done after centuries of exploiting and oppressing everyone. And it will never gain back the power. Welcome to the Pella. Mm. Uh, Gail Serrano says, it was a real shame that Miss Tipper did not get more praise for her acting. Now, I personally thought that Naomi's plot was a bit too long and drawn out, but that being said, keep in mind she had to act by herself in front of a green, sc green screen for lots of the storyline, yet emotional reach, yet her emotional reach was deep and excellently done. Yeah, she yeah, deserved yeah. mainstream, out of the sci-fi world, recognition of yeah. a job well done. Facts. Alright, and Kirk Darling says, remember way back in the first season when Havelock's call girl was teaching him belter hand signals? Big arms, she said. Holden's family lived off the grid on a large self-sustaining farm way off in Mont Montana. The fact that they had to be evacuated to Luna means overall conditions on Earth were getting really bad. Great mm. point. They mentioned Admiral Duarte. We first saw that name in season four on a hand terminal Bobby had of the Martian. Who were, who were smuggling out equipment to Marco's belters. This season has a big fan divider because of the extra time they gave to human drama and nearly no time to alien activity. In my opinion, the real story of The Expanse has always been the human drama. The protomolecule is just a MacGuffin to push the human drama like the Ark in uh, Raiders and the Lost of the Lost Ark or the Ring in The Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you enjoyed it as I did. Yeah, last season was fire. Yeah. Fire, fire. Yeah. All right, guys. Great comments as <laughs> always. Thanks for the insight. You guys always keep us abreast of the things that we've missed. Yeah. Um, and we that appreciate that. We appreciate that every time. It's going to take us an episode or two to get reacclimated to the expanse. Um, but we're excited. It's really Jurassic Park. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't be this is exactly them. like Jurassic Park. Don't be feeding them Earth shit. If I can figure out how to tell you Earth. Oh, Mars stuff. Here we go on that. Yeah, that's what they look like. Yeah, that's what they look like. Who's there? Sam? Is that you? It better not be. I told you to stop following me. Four significant fragments made it to ground, two striking populated areas, total casualties under 500. Don't try to make it sound like a success. No, I, I wasn't, ma'am, but we have knocked down nearly every rock Marco and Naris has stolen us for the last six months. There's 200 God, individual strikes. Yeah. And he has kept what's left of our fleet pinned down doing it. Why he makes every station and rock hopper in the belt pledge allegiance to his so-called 
fucking free Navy. Mars has assured us there will be one more Donager class operational within the month. And we'll have three more battleships ready for deployment by year's end. But the yards are working around the clock. So. She's so irritated. <laughs> Like a goddamn nuclear winter. Have you read the latest biospheric assessment? Not yet. Repurposing our atmospheric CO2 scrubbers isn't working. Not well enough. Meteoric contaminants are still rising. Even faster than before. Every rock kills us a little more, even when they miss. I gave a speech at that facility when it opened, a dozen years ago, almost a day. I toured those fields. The corn was ready to harvest. The stalks were so heavy they bent. the rumors of free Navy activity in this area. I look very exhausted. Sweeping 360. Not there as well. Rosenfeld with me. Hey, late to a meeting with the boss man, huh? It's pounds. Uh, got lost in the wood? Uh, what was her name? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> What's all this? Ah, huh? alligator skin. You like? Uh, an animal. Huh, it's very expensive. Shopkeeper gave me a bargain to one of the cops, huh? <laughs> he stole your money, Copain. It's fake. You can't even come to me. What the fuck are you going to take from me? Give them what's up then. Now, then you, the day you're only keeping you around because you're so. <clears throat> and more so to hurt Naomi than anything else. I think sometimes I convince myself the worst can't happen. It's way for me to get through things. I'll be more careful for all of us, I promise. And we're not going to stop. I tried for so long to stay away from the violence, but Marco pulled me back into it. And now the people we're hunting and killing, the same ones I used to call my own. I don't know how much longer I can bear it. The communications director will be scheduled. Now, is it true you reached out to Marco and Naros to discuss a peace treaty? Because that's what I've been hearing. The only thing Marco and Naros has to offer me is his unconditional surrender. The colonies have been incommunicado and at the mercy of the Free Navy since Naros wiped out our forces at the ring. He could be starving the settlers out or using them as forced labor to survive. That's why we are at war with him. Has anybody in your cabinet proposed negotiations? The deliberations of my cabinet in the time of war are a matter of national security and none of your fucking business. Hmm. 
Madam Secretary General, the people of this planet have been through hell and it's only getting worse. They're just looking for honest answers. You owe them that. In case that wasn't clear enough, we're done here. You know, Sergeant, if you want my advice, I don't. you should try to impress upon your boss the fact that she has constituents, not subjects. She's aware of the distinction. The one thing I always liked about you is you kind of suck at lying. So that's stuff with her. Not subjects. You want another? Even if I was done drinking and she just came back and asked me, I'm going to take another. I'm going to crazy right now. Time for your performance review. My what? You hate this job. Yes, ma'am. I do. I understand. I'll sit down. If I don't get the easy way out, neither do you. Your problem is that you're a Marine. You're sick of doing nothing. So are you. So is the whole fucking planet. I just received word from Holden. He believes they've located an enormous spotter ship. They're going to check it out. See if they're right. If they are, that would be good. What's Fuck this? good. She's so excited. We need better than good. We're wounded, broken, trying desperately to keep ourselves going by pretending we're not. Cutting through it all, mm. wearing down. Little wins here and there will not hold us together. We need more than that. Something big. Something to give us a reason to hope. You have something in mind? I do. What is it? the season premiere of season six of the expanse and a lot of catching up to do on there i see everybody is still in a little bit of um um a hangover phase from from the last season i mean we got some issues that we're gonna have to to talk about wrap up and, and get off our chest on this one uh, starting with naomi's son um, he definitely got some ptsd going on and he feels some type of way about everything as a young youth would be especially throw off, thrown into this type of situation he gonna have to deal with that cuz and his daddy as good as he is with words ain't saying shit to him at all cuz he doesn't give a fuck about he, him. he just letting him do what he like, gotta he do literally cares I mean he gonna have to say something now at this point he just killed somebody in the yeah the damn kitchen so we got to deal with that part right there. Um, significant win um, for for the Earth team because they just figured out maybe that they found a, a, a thing that might be controlling all the rocks and, you know, where it might be coming from. So, yeah, if they can take that down, that would be big. But Chrissy, she wants something bigger than that. I don't know what that is. Is that maybe sneak attack? You know, let, let's meet with, um, 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 what's his name in the Free Navy? Marcos. Let's meet with Marcos and then kill him. When we meet with him, you know, super sneaky, we can do that. I don't know, but it's got to be something big like that. Uh, but, yeah, that's where we are right now. A lot of tension on the Resonati, too. So, we're going to have to resolve that as we move forward. But, yeah, a lot of factions, again, like this series always starts. Everything's spread apart. Then, towards the end, it comes back together for, for one single thing. And I think we're going to do the same thing on this season right here. But what is the big catalyst? Other than Marcos right now, we shall see. But I love the introduction to it. It still looks great in space. All the space stuff and the spaceships and the walking all looks great. And they, they do a, a excellent job every single time they damn do this series. But um, 
Can't wait to see any more episodes on there. But yeah, season one, off the chain. So, episode let's one. go. Episode one, yeah. Um, so, I loved um, it opening up to with Chrissy on uh, planet Earth with Bobby. So, we could get the insights as far as like what's happening there. And the fact that um, the biometrics and the impact that the, uh, the rocks have had just continue to escalate that even without the rocks hitting, Earth is like dying. So they're not able to, even the stuff they've implemented so far isn't, um, isn't healing the damage fast yeah. enough. So there's gotta be something else that takes place. Um, the, I also like the very beginning as far as seeing the other planet. And so we got to see other life. So we see that they're mm -hmm. actively out on planets right now. So yeah, the Mars that, people. Uh, that was just a, a, a quick little show there. I thought that was going to go so differently too. <laughs> like the, my experience with movies in that space, I was like, this is about to be bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also the impact that we have in these ecosystems is going to have an impact as well because we just saw what the little girl. So she I thought that, that was just great insight with little, just a little bit of showing. Um, and then yeah, with the I thought especially the last clip with Chrissy, um, the voiceover while seeing the Rossi crew about how we're all just kind of pushing through trying to make it day by day, even though we know at this point we're not getting any gains, we're just surviving and we're hardly doing that. And that's literally etched on specifically Naomi's face and Holden's face too. I think Amos and Peaches are, to your point, um, much more able to cope with this because they've been through so much shit yeah. that this being free and being with their friends is enough to like satisfy them yeah, and make good. them happy but like Naomi is struggling to the fullest extent so is Holden and so is um Philippe Philip um so it'll be interesting to see how these dynamics play out because Naomi can't continue the way that they're going none of them can no. so I think to Chrissy's point they do need a big Breaking win point. what does that win look like the only thing that I thought of in the moment is because we're anticipating that Holden goes and destroys this ship that's ultimately um, controlling all the rocks, but I think the bigger play could potentially be they take that ship over because they just mentioned how limited and how scarce that type of ship can be, so if they can add that to their arsenal yeah. that does give them an upper hand, so to speak. And turn the rocks around. Exactly. So that would be the only play I could think of because I can't think beyond what yeah. they just suggested. Yeah. Was is the thought that I had, but great opening. Cannot wait to jump into the rest of the season. We're just starting off. The second episode hasn't even aired, so we're here early on. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting, and hope we get the opportunity to check the second episode out here soon. Thank you again for the anonymous executive producer for sponsoring this yeah. reaction. We really appreciate it, and we hope to get, uh, hope to check out more soon. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for another EP sponsored reaction. Um, this one was The Expanse, season six, episode number one. And until next time, people, peace.